What's up guys, thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me. A few days ago, a standalone new 3DS streaming client that doesn't rely on NTR Viewer was resurrected from the dead with an update allowing it to be a real contender against KitKat Slim. Can it take the streaming belt or is KitKat going to be reigning supreme for a little bit longer? This is the 3DS first look at Snickerstream, a completely new streaming client. I've pulled up the release for Snickerstream over on GBA Temp. Obviously, a link will be in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. Basically, I want to see what Snickerstream was all about, and this is pulled from the README. So, Snickerstream is a completely new streaming client for NTR custom firmware. It aims to be a complete NTR viewer replacement with lots of extra features, including stuff such as better netcode, more screen layouts, and less RAM usage. This is different than KitKat or NitroStream, as the former still use NTR viewer as internal streaming clients, while Snickerstream has been completely rewritten from scratch, making it the first real NTR streaming client alternative. Now, why would you want an alternative to NTR Viewer? Well, NTR Viewer hasn't been updated in a while, and so the creator wanted to go ahead and make his own that he can update regularly. So reading on, what does Snickerstream bring to the table compared to other alternatives? Real-time screen scaling, you can go ahead and use the arrow keys to increase or decrease the size of the screens. You can use pixel interpolation to increase the image quality if you have increased the window size. It apparently uses way less RAM, half as much as NTR Viewer, viewer in a quarter as much as KitKat. It has better net code that will automatically try to recover any lost frames if needed. There's a native 64-bit version for anyone that has a 64-bit version of Windows and wants some better performance. There is also more options that will allow Snickerstream to work on crappy computers or networks. So if you don't have the best router or maybe you're using a laptop, maybe Snickerstream is going to work better for you. Over here on the GitHub release page, as you can see, this was released two days ago. If we scroll down, you can go ahead and download Download the 64-bit version or the 32-bit. I'm going to go ahead and get the 64-bit version and I'll meet you guys down in our downloads. Here in the downloads, I'm going to go ahead and right-click Snickerstream and use 7-zip to extract it to Snickerstream. I'm going to put it in its own little folder. I'm going to go ahead and delete the zip. Don't need it any longer. Now if we open up Snickerstream, you can see that all there is in here is in .exe. Now the .exe is simply all you need to run Snickerstream and get your new 3DS streaming to your PC. We can go ahead and check out the README if you want to know how to use it. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, it shows you some keyboard shortcuts. Basically, pressing the escape key will exit out of the program. This is one of the only ways to exit out of the program. You can also use the up and down arrows to increase slash decrease the scaling. So this will make your screens bigger. You can also use the left and right arrows to change the interpolation settings, which will kind of change the quality depending on how big or how small you've made the screen. And you can also press the S key to take a screenshot. So those are all pretty cool features and it's actually really awesome. Although the only thing is, while I have Snickerstream open and I go to do other things and I press the up and down arrows or the left and right or even the S key, it'll still take the screenshots and it'll still change the scaling of the screen even though I'm not on Snickerstream. Let's go ahead and open up Snickerstream. Now when you open up Snickerstream, it'll create a settings.ini file. This is basically just going to save all the settings that you happen to enter into the app here. As you can see, Snickerstream is a pretty simple looking just kind of Windows app. It has the option to enter in your 3DS's IP address. I'll show you how to get that in a moment. It also has a place to change the screen priority from the top screen to the bottom screen in case you happen to be playing a touchpad heavy game. Priority factor and image quality as well as quality of service value are all things that you might have to play around with to get a good stream. Default settings for some reason do not work for me, so I have to change a few things. I'm going to show you guys what I change it to and how I get it working for me. Over here for display settings, you can change the interpolation, and this is going to allow you to increase the quality of the stream. You can go ahead and leave it on default if you're not really too interested in messing with anything. I'm going to go ahead and put it on to high quality. And for your screen layout, you can change it from vertical to vertical inverted, which would have the two screens stacked on top of each other, but the opposite way. You can have horizontal, the two screens next to each other. Again, you can invert that horizontal, and then you can have top screen only in case you're playing a game where you really only need the top screen, 
or you can have bottom screen only in case again you're playing a touch screen heavy game. The full screen option does not work very well and it might be dependent on your computer the type of performance that you get on this mode. So I'm not suggesting trying out full screen at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this on vertical for now. Let's head down to the 3DS for a second and I'll show you guys how to get this set up. So first off, go ahead and launch NTR Custom Firmware. You can select 3.6, that will work fine. Once NTR Custom Firmware is loaded, press the L down and select button to open up your Rosalina menu. Now you're going to go down to debugger options and hit A, and then you're going to enable your debugger, hit OK, and then hit B. Now on the top right of your bottom screen, you'll see your 3DS's IP address. Go ahead and enter this into Snickerstream. Now you can go ahead and disable the debugger, hit the B button a couple of times to exit out of the Rosalina menu, and now you're ready to go to connect with Snickerstream. Now that we've got our 3DS's IP address, go ahead and set your screen priority. I'm going to be using the top screen as I'm going to be playing top screen heavy games. As I said before, I'm going to leave the screen layout on vertical. Now these are the default settings. You can go ahead and try these out. I'm going to go ahead and put my quality of service up to 38. And I'm going to put my priority factor on 2. Now, when we click Start Remote Play, you should see a couple of screen flashes on your 3DS. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, wait a second, and you should get a message that Remote Play was successfully started. Go ahead and hit OK. And now, last but not least, just click Connect, and you should see your 3DS streaming onto your screen. If you happen to get a Windows Defender firewall warning or some sort of firewall warning, then you're going to want to definitely allow this to go through your firewall. So I'm going to go ahead and hit allow access. And as you can see here, Snickerstream is now streaming. The actual little client disappears and is replaced by an NTR viewer type window where it shows your frame rate. And that is basically it. If I go ahead and press the up arrow on my keyboard, you can see it increases the size of the viewer. Although one thing to note, when I increase it too large, it'll go ahead and 100% kill the FPS just like it has right there. Now you can see if I press the down arrow and shrink it back, then all of a sudden I get the stream back with the same FPS. So I'm hoping in the future maybe that'll get figured out. Now you can also use the left and right arrows to change the interpolation but you can't really notice it unless you make the screens bigger and if I make the screens bigger then I lose all my FPS. So that is one little bug at the moment. One other keyboard shortcut to try out is the S key. So if you watch in the background, if I press the S key, it'll go ahead and create a screenshot in my Snickerstream directory. So you can see it actually made a fairly high quality BMP image. Here it is right here. That is a super quick way to take a screenshot and definitely an awesome feature. I'm going to go ahead and do a side by side comparison of KitKat Slim next to Snickerstream. Now I've got them on the exact same settings, Priority Factor 7, Quality of Service 101, and they're both on top screen priority. Oh, also the quality is set to 70. I don't have any interpolation settings on Snickerstream, so we're going to see how a race in Mario Kart goes. I'm going to do the exact same race, same character, same everything, and we'll see what's up. We're starting these two races at exactly the same time and right off the bat something I noticed was that Snickerstream has this sort of like FPS cap. I don't want to say it's a cap but it likes to hover around 33 FPS and stay there and it'll hang out there for a pretty long time and the stream looks really smooth when it's doing it. As you can see KitKat or NTR viewer on the left is doing really well and I want to say that the stream actually looks a bit smoother on NTR viewer but they're very very comparable and it's really hard to tell the difference. The only thing that I noticed right off the bat is that I was killing it playing on NTR viewer as opposed to playing on snicker stream I was getting kind of beat up a little bit. Both streams seem to have their fair share of dropped frames although it seems like snicker streams code can handle it a little bit better. Overall, I want to say that they perform almost equally as well and Snickerstream seems to be a completely viable option if you're a streamer and you're looking to stream your 3DS to your computer or even just record some gameplay. Last thing I want to talk about is sort of CPU and RAM usage when running KitKat Slim versus running Snickerstream. 
Now, as you can see, these are a couple of screenshots from my task manager. And right off the bat, you can see KitKat Slim as well as NTR Viewer use over 100 megabytes of memory combined. Meanwhile, Snickerstream alone is only using 20 megabytes. So the claim that maybe it does use less RAM is pretty much confirmed, I think, right here. Although my memory overall, I'm only using 2% less, 2% is a fair amount. One other thing to notice is that KitKat Slim and NTR Viewer are not using a lot of CPU, and I believe that's because NTR Viewer uses some of my GPU to encode. Meanwhile, Snickerstream seems to use only CPU. As you can see, I'm up at 3.7% usage over there. Now I'm sure I'm not interpreting this exactly as I'm supposed to, but it's a little look into each program and you can decide which one you want to use. Well, I've basically told you that I think Snickerstream is on par with NTR Viewer, but here are the pros and cons that I've figured out so far. The pros are, it's fast, it's got a pretty steady FPS, it seemingly uses less RAM, it doesn't require NTR viewer, so it's only its own EXE, which is awesome. It has a screenshot hotkey, which is super handy, and you can resize the windows on the fly. The cons are that there's no NFC patch for Pokemon or Zelda games, and there's no built-in input redirection client. Although, it would be pretty cool to see it merged with Master Mune's input redirection, another mod. Another con is that resizing, although is an awesome option, it seemingly kills the FPS in a lot of situations and can even completely halt the stream. Again, I love the screenshot hotkey feature and the resizing hotkeys, but you can also, while not being clicked on Snickerstream, accidentally take screenshots or resize your windows. The last con that isn't really a big deal is you can't reconnect without exiting the program and opening it back up. I'd love if the escape key took you back to the main UI and then you could go ahead and hit connect again and restart the stream. With all that in mind, again, I think Snickerstream is absolutely awesome and it's great to see some alternatives to NTR Viewer and maybe even in the future we could see some alternatives to NTR custom firmware itself. I know the Luma team says it doesn't want to bring video streaming into Luma 3DS, but again, I just need to have it. We got to have a custom firmware that has NTR built into it and then hopefully even runs faster or even better. If you guys are going to be using Snickerstream, go down to the comments and let me know and if you already use KitKat or KitKat Slim let me know how it compares to it and if you're going to be switching over permanently. If you haven't slammed that thumbs up please do it really helps out the channel and if you haven't subscribed subscribe for more I got tons more content coming. This was a 3DS first look at Snickerstream a completely new streaming client.